Today, I'm going to share with you my actual trades over the past 10 days in my options account, including expiration week, which was last week. I think you'll be able to get some benefit out of seeing how I traded out of these positions and planned for next month's expirations. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year real estate investor, as well as stock and option trader. And when I trade stocks, I almost always trade dividend stocks. Today, I want to share with you the trades we have made and the thinking behind some of those trades as we closed out the April expiration options. And then also how we are moving forward, our plans for how to roll those positions in the May expiration. So let's switch over to our screen here and check out some of these actual trades. Now on the screen here, you see multiple, multiple positions. We have quite a few positions in this account. And so typically the process goes that we buy the one that's expiring and then sell an option that expires the next month, which in this case will be May. So our first trade there, we can see that it's, it's Apple and we had the April 220 puts that we had sold and we had to buy those back. The cost was $5. So not much in cost and a small little commission fee there. And then we bumped the, the next strike price up in May to 225. So we now have sold the May 225 put options and that actually paid us $3.30 per share. So we see a nice, a nice return there. If you do a cash on cash return, it's a very nice cash on cash return over a stable company that we would like to own. The next one is some calls that we had sold and the stock was approaching the price. They were Ad, ADV, ticker symbol ABBV, see the April 85 calls. And the action on the stock price had me a little bit concerned that we might hit that, that uh, strike price before expiration day, which was last Friday. And so we actually bought those back early and paid nine cents for them. The next one is Disney. It's a stock that we also want to get into and we hold some deep in the money puts. So we were selling some short-term call options against that deep in money put until the price comes up. In the meantime, we're reducing our cost basis. As you can see here that we owned the April, we had sold the April 125 calls and those expired worthless. So, so far the money that we didn't even bother, we didn't even bother buying those back. And then you see there are 160 call that we actually owned for upside protection against that 125 call that we had sold and that also expired worthless. But the new position here is the May 130 calls that we sold. So we actually were able to roll this call up because Disney has come up since it bottomed out. So we're actually able to roll this call up $5 because they have earnings coming up. And we actually received not, not a big payday, but $32 on an option that's way out of the money. It's nowhere even close. The next trade is DLR. And you see that we closed out the April 120 put for nine cents. I don't typically like to have these options open, especially if there's several days to expiration, which you see this one was traded on the 13th and expiration wasn't until Friday of that week. So we closed that out, paid nine cents, and we were able to get a nice return again, $1.85 per share. So pocketed about $185 on that, that one position. Now Dow, Dow is D-O-W is another stock that we sold puts and they're way deep in the money. So we're just selling some calls while the market settles down and hopefully it comes back up a little bit and then we'll be glad to be assigned that stock. Until then, we're gonna keep rolling that put option. And if it gets assigned to us, great. We bought it at a discount from where it was selling at when we first sold the put options. And if it, um, if it stays down, then we just keep collecting premium. In the meantime, we're gonna sell some call options against it. I just closed, I just allowed to expire the one there in April and I'm waiting for the stock to come up a little bit so the call options have increased value and then I'll sell a new position. The next one is Johnson & Johnson, a company we own some stock of in another, um, another account, another portfolio, but this account here, we're trying to ease into it with a great cost basis. And we bought back the April 125 puts. It cost us eight cents. Again, just want to close it out. And we actually sold the 130 puts for May and got a dollar and 50 cents. In this position here, what happened was I normally, week of, week of expiration, those options expire at four o'clock on Friday afternoon. What I normally do is put in orders on Monday. And if they get hit at the price that they get, that I put it in at, I'm happy to have done that trade at that price. So that's why you see some of these hitting earlier. 
um, because number one, the one we had sold short for April was almost worthless. And so you don't get much value over holding that for that final week. Why not begin to collect some premium for May? And then also we just put in an order that we would be very happy at, at getting hit at that order. And if it hits, great. If not, then Friday, we cancel those short ones that expire on Friday afternoon and we just sell to open new put options or roll the position that day. So continuing on to Lazard, ticker symbol LAZ. It's another uh, stock that we have some deep in the money options from where the stock really went down in, in May. And we're just selling some call options here. We allowed to expire five contracts with the $39 call options and we'll sell some new call options against that position once the stock comes up some. And moving on to Texas Instrument, ticker symbol TXN. That was, that's a stock that we're trying to get into in this account. We had sold the 100 puts and we bought those back for 13 cents on the 16th, which was, I believe it was the 16th was Thursday. Yep. So we bought it the day before expiration. We bought them back for 13 cents. We're actually able to sell the May 100 puts and got $3 and eight cents. So a nice pocket there on that one. So moving on to UPS. Now you'll see that, that we bought this option back for 44 cents and it, you might think, well, man, that's a lot of premium left, but look that we got $4.94 for the May option. What happened was this is one of those positions that I had put out there earlier and it hadn't quite hit. So on Friday, I didn't want to leave this option open because the market has been volatile and, and the stock price wasn't that far from that 100 put option. So I put out an order and we we're able to net $4.50 per share on that UPS position. So moving on to Walgreens, ticker symbol WAB. We bought, this is another one that we had put an order out there and it just got, it got hit on the 14th. You see it several days before expiration day. We bought back the May 37 and a half expiration puts for 36 cents. And we rolled out to June, we're actually able to get $1.20. Now what happened here is I set alerts on my positions that when they get below 20 to 25% of their worth, when an option gets below that price, I have an alert to alert me to look to see if I want to go ahead and roll it. Say for example, you sold a, an option for a dollar. When it hits 20 cents to 25 cents, there's not a whole lot of time value left in it. So I have an alert to see if it's a position I want to roll. That's exactly what happened here with Walgreens. My alert went off and I realized there wasn't much premium left. Let's just see if we can get a nice return by rolling out one month. And that's how it worked out. So finally, a position we already own some stock in. Exxon Mobil has been tore up really bad with the oil situation. We still like the company. We know they go through some hard times, but we still think it's a solid company. They're paying nice dividends. Maybe a dividend cut coming, but in the meantime, we'll keep collecting what we get and selling some, some call options against it. So the April 50 call, it expired worthless. And on Friday, knowing that it would expire worthless later that night, we sold the May 50 calls and didn't collect much, but collected 23 cents a share. And it still gives us a lot of room. I believe it was around 20% of the stock could move up and we still get to pocket our premium there. One final note here that today um, we received some dividends here. You see in the amount of 27 cents per share on these 400 shares of Ozark that we own. So as you can see, we collected some nice cash. And I understand this account has zero leverage on it. With options, you can really leverage up. With maybe say a $200,000 account, you can be trading a million dollars worth of positions and we don't like to use leverage. We have in the past and it just doesn't sit well with us right now. If you have a really hard downturn like what happened in March, it can be really stressful. And so we, we just don't do that right now. But as you can see, in spite of that, just over the past 10 days, we've been able to receive a net cash in our pocket of about $1,569 from rolling positions. And then also an additional $108 from dividends from Bank of Ozarks. So it's a nice cash we put into our, our pocket just over the past 10 days. Now I want to switch over here to our actual live orders. I want to show you what I've meant by rolling positions early. So six positions, especially when they get deep in the money, it can be hard to get a nice return. At that point, we probably just allow the stock to be assigned to us we begin to reap the, the benefits of receiving the dividends as well as selling some call options out of the money in hopes that the stock may continue to appreciate and then we could uh, just sell those call options that are closer. So let's review the orders we have out there right now. 
So the first one you'll see there is the Dow Chemical Company. And so we currently have sold short the June of this year 45 put. Now this one's deep in the money. And we have an order out there. You see the net, it says a, a negative $2. Well, that's a credit because we're buying this order. You see the key action says buy, but we're actually getting $2 per share if this hits. And we're trying to buy back the June 45 puts and sell the September 45 puts and net $2 a share. If that gets hit, great. If the stock gets assigned to us, this order will automatically cancel. We'll begin to collect dividends on it and we'll begin to immediately sell call options out of the money against it. Moving on to Johnson & Johnson, we rolled one position last week, but we have another one that we entered a while back. And so we have an order to buy back the May 110 puts, you see it on the bottom, and then sell the June 130 puts. So we'll be rolling this up quite a bit, $20, but we only will do that if we get $3.40 per share. I feel like around 130 is some nice support. And so if we get $3.40 for that additional month, having to roll it up, that's a great return for us. We'll be happy to take it. If not, this order will just sit out there until expiration may gets closer and we'll adjust it. Next is the ABBV, ticker symbol ABBV. So we had sold the 75 call. Right now that call is in the money by about $6. And so we have an order that we, we feel like this stock could potentially move up over the next months and years. So we want to try and roll this position up, but still get some money in our pocket. And so we have out an order to buy back the May 75 call and roll it up to June and roll it up $2.50 and still get a $2 credit. Now, not very likely that will happen, but if it just pops just right, our order is sitting out there. If not, come closer to May 15th, we'll adjust that order. Moving on to Ozark, Bank of Ozarks, one that we talked about a few minutes ago. They just paid us a nice little dividend. Well, we have done an order to buy back the May 30 call. We actually have two positions here. We have some deep in the money puts as well as some calls we're selling against those puts and against the position we already own. So we have done an order to buy back the May 30 call and sell the August 30 call. So we're going to extend that out several months. And if they'll give us $1.12 per share, we'll be glad to take it. Same deal on the put. We have some puts that are expiring that are currently deep in the money that we think they could potentially move up over the next year. Will it happen by, by May? Probably not. But we put an order out there anyways to buy back the May 25 puts and sell the August 25 puts to net $1.15. Finally, CXW, they own the prison REIT. That one's been going out for quite a while. We have a very small position in this with this company and this account as well as our other account. And deep in the money again, they do pay a really high dividend. It seems like a fairly safe investment, given what may or may not happen to the government. That's the real uh, controversy with, with this company right now, which I won't give my thoughts on that right now. If you want more information on why I chose these stocks, please leave comments below and I'll go into depth. But right now, this is simply a video about my actual trades and the orders I have coming up. So the prison company there, we have done an order to buy back the June 14 puts and roll it out to September. And we'll do that for a dollar and three cents. Look at this, it's just a $14 uh, put. The return on investment is, is really good on that when you multiply it times the full year. And finally, we, we bought some Apple puts a while back for protection. And we don't need that protection anymore. Our account is fully capitalized. We have enough cash to buy every position at every put strike price. So we have an order out there to sell this if, if the price comes up a little bit. Same with Berkshire Hathaway. We did the same thing, bought some out of the money puts in case the market kept collapsing on us and now we're fully capitalized so no need to have that downside protection these companies are ones that aren't going anywhere if they go way down we're happy to own them and so that sits out there to try and sell out of those those protected puts and finally mplx it's a it's a pipeline company again one that got really crushed with the oil situation and we actually have a position uh, in september put we sold us deep in the money and we're trying to see if we can buy that back and sell the one for January at the same strike price and get $1.25. That would be a great return from us for that time period. So we'll be happy to take it if it hits. If not, as it gets closer, then we'll adjust it. And if it gets assigned to us, this order will cancel. We'll begin to immediately collect dividends as well as begin to sell call options against it. So that's a really in-depth look of my trades over the past 10 days as well as the orders I have sitting out there right now. This is a business for me. Uh, all I do is trade and real estate. I've done that solely as my only source of income over the past 12 years. I've been a trader and an investor for over 21 years. So I love what I do. 
I actually love my trading more than my real estate, especially right now with a few tenants deciding not to pay and we can't kick them out. So that's why I like to have my income diversified. This is just one of my streams. Trading options is one of my streams. I'm not a day trader. I can go days and days without looking at it. I can go weeks and times without looking at it, but I enjoy it. I enjoy trading. I enjoy looking at positions. I spend 30 minutes to an hour each day just reviewing my positions. If an alert pops up that one of the options I sold is now worthless, well, I'll look to roll it. Right now I have several, um, such as the my position here in Cisco. Uh, I was able to sell a nice option. I talked about this in a previous video. We're able to get $1.34 for an option that was about 50% out of the money and expired 30 days later. Well, option, we got $1.34. That option now is, is down to 28 cents. So I'm in the process of possibly rolling that one, as well as a few other ones that, that are now getting close to being worthless and I'm looking to roll them. So that's a, a nice uh, view of what happened over the past 10 days with an actual live trader. Um, I, I love what I do, it's fun. It generates cash whether the market goes up or down. If these positions get assigned to us, it's no problem. We have the cash sitting there waiting in the account and be glad to own those stocks and we would immediately begin to collect dividends as well as sell, sell call options against those positions. So I hope this helps you kind of get the thinking about um, how to set up your trades for the future as well as some of the cash you can receive by selling options. And we do have positions in AbbVie, uh, FedEx, 3M, Ozark, and Exxon Mobil that we're currently collecting dividends on, as well as selling call options against them. We love those companies. Uh, they're one of, as you see, a huge basket of companies we own. So if one really heads down, then we'll still be okay. We'll continue to sell options against it and collect on the other ones as well. So I hope you enjoyed this, this view of, of, of how I trade my account, how I place my orders, some of the cash benefits you can receive by doing this. I'll try and make these videos on trading a little more regular. That way you can get an idea of how I go about setting up trades and some of the trade ideas that, that I am doing right now. Please know this video is solely about my experience. This is not advice to you on what to buy or sell. I'm simply sharing my experience and the current positions that I'm trading in to show how I do them. So please do your own research, get your own advice from your financial advisor. Don't trade on just what some guy on YouTube is telling you to do. But I appreciate you watching the video. Please subscribe if, if you found benefit as well as give it a thumbs up and hit the little bell notification. And until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.